if this is live or yet because okay yay I think I'm live I'm using a new program so bear with me let's see okay so I should be able to see if people are on here today if you're watching the replay we're going to talk about some of the major logistics for your move because some of them I see a lot of people just completely forgetting about or they leave them to the very last moment so I want to go through them just point by point with you so that you can take note of them. We'll take notes together and then you can make sure that you're not, you know, missing any of these. So I guess I'll wait for some people to get on here. See, otherwise, if you're watching the replay, my name is Sarah Elena. I do help people move to Costa Rica. That's what I do full time. Got an amazing team that assists with everything as well. And okay, we got somebody on here on YouTube. Hello. Let's see. I sh this is a new program. So hopefully I can see if people write a comment. Would someone be able to, if you're on here, we got one person on here, can you write a comment so I know that you're there? Okay, looks like I can, I'll can. i be able to see YouTube and Facebook. Like I said, I'm using a different program for this than I normally do. So if someone could write a comment, that way I just make sure that pops up. That way, because in case we do some Q&A here at the end, then I can make sure to speedy people's questions otherwise i won't be able to see anything and i'm just going to go on facebook real quick to see if i'm live we're going to be talking about logistics for your move because i do see a lot of people forgetting some very major major logistics okay i am live on facebook excellent okay pony said hello see it's not showing up on my let me look for my comments again see if i saw tony's comment because i just saw it on facebook sorry just bear with me i'm learning a whole new program here I've been doing some recording on this program, but I, this is my first time going live on it. So, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, I can see comments now. Okay. So, yeah, for Facebook, it's not going to show me your name. I think maybe you have to give it permission, but you don't have to. Maybe if, if you have a question, if anyone has a question towards the end of this or during the, you know, the live stream, then if you want to put your name, go ahead. If not, then I'll just be able to see just Facebook user. But for YouTube, it does say the name. So, excellent. Well, I hope everyone had a nice weekend. It's been kind of busy over here in Costa Rica. It's been hot. I thought that summertime was coming, but it, I mean, I thought winter, our rainy season was coming, but I think it maybe it tricked us. It's not fully here yet, unfortunately. But yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk about some of the nine logistics. So I guess whoever is, actually, it's going to be more than nine. Whoever is watching, are you already in Costa Rica? Are you moving? Or are you just kind of thinking about it? Like you're just kind of started thinking about potentially moving. You're very early on in the process. For me, it's nice to kind of know who's in here and what kind of demographic I'm dealing with. And I know that some people who have already moved also do watch these as well. And some logistics do happen after the move is, uh, too. So it's good for us to cover these even if you've already moved too. So maybe, yeah, if anyone can add in the comments. Again, I see three comments here where you're kind of at in your process. If you've already moved, if you're thinking about moving, or if you're just super early in the process, or if you know that you're moving, you're just moving in X amount of months from now. Okay, there we go. I have someone who's in San Mateo in the research phase. Perfect, okay, well this is definitely be good for the research phase, but also, like I said, it can still apply to someone who's already here. These are just a lot of the major logistics. So if any of you, I guess, aren't super familiar, or I guess some of you from YouTube do know who I am, and I appreciate you following along, thank you. Uh, anyone watching in the Facebook group, this is uh, my Facebook group <laughs> that I made years ago. I just need to get on here and get live more often. But we've been busy helping people move to the country. So it doesn't always happen as often as I would, you know, like it to. But I am really trying to make room in my calendar to be able to come on, come live, give value to the group, give more value to the channel, and, you know, help you guys as much as I can. So we're going to share the old iPad today. Let's see, I want to share myself too. There we go. And we're going to talk through some of these logistics. And if you guys have questions, you can put them in the comments. I'm not living here, but own a pretty large property outside of Coriscal. Okay, November 2025. Excellent. Okay, so we do have some people moving on along. Um, I don't know, how can I move myself to the other side? Sorry. Okay, let me try that. There we go. I don't know. I'm kind of particular like that. I want my writing to be on the right side. I don't know why. Okay, so some of you have probably already gone through some logistics, but one of the main, okay, this is if you've already decided that you're going to move. Well, I guess number one, you should figure out if it's the right decision for you. So, you know, decide if it's appropriate. 
you know, decide if you should move. <laughs> so for some of you that might be scouting trips, okay, Renee right here left a year ago, but coming back. So some people do come down for scouting trips. That's something that we plan as well, like helping someone get down to the country, decide if it's a real good fit for them. I have other areas. I mean, I have other videos on my channel talking all about kind of a lot of the things to consider and decide, you know, to help you decide if it's even the right country. You know, you'd be thinking, is the healthcare system the right fit for you? Are you up to learning a whole new language? You know, is the overall culture of Costa Rica a good fit for you? Politically, is it a good fit? Lifestyle wise, and there's a different, lots of different lifestyles within the country, but that's kind of definitely going to be your personal decision. Like I said, in this video, we're going to focus more on the actual logistics, but let's say once you've decided that you do want to move and you do have a timeline, you know, you're going to need to, well, set your timeline. So setting your timeline. So I have someone here in the comments that said, Virginia Clark said November, 2025. So November, 2025, now you have a timeline and here are some of the major, you know, logistics that you should be you know, working through. So number one would be, you know, determining the area where you want to start. So I would say determine area of the country. And for that, like I said, a lot of people might come down for scouting trips. We have some people, so I just moved without doing any kind of trip. Like I did things pretty recklessly. That's why I come on here and I try to help as much as I can so that people don't make a lot of the same mistakes that I did. But determining an area of the country. So I do feel like this can definitely make or break your move. I've talked about this topic a lot. I went live on this topic weeks ago about things that you should be considering in an area for yourself. So, you know, the types of roads, distance to medical, distance to the airport, kind of overall feel somewhere really busy. Do you want somewhere laid back? Do you want mountains, beach, climate? You know, there's a lot of different factors. So I've already discussed that, but that would be definitely, you know, narrowing down your area is, you know, a huge logistic. And it's not to say that you have to do it perfectly, but at least be picking an area that's going to really meet all of your needs. And then you can always branch out from there. So if anyone knows me, I've moved around a lot. So I actually have a video that's going to be coming out probably later this month or next month about all the houses that I've ever lived here. And it's 20. So I've lived in 20 total houses here in the country. <laughs> There's no shame in moving around until you really just find your place that you're happy with. But so I would say determining First of all, determining the area of the country that's going to be the best potential fit for you. Like if we're working with someone in their relocation, that's the first thing that we're going to tackle before anything else, at least narrowing down those areas. And like I said, scouting trips or just maybe the person's further research, or if we can connect them with someone who lives in that area that can talk about their personal experience living there or a few other ones so they can help narrow that down. You know, that's definitely one major logistic there. So number two would be, well, you know, your residency and visas. So just, you need to know your residency and visa options. So a lot of people now it's 180 days, you know, you can spend 180 days on the tourist visa in Costa Rica. A lot of people might just do what's called perpetual tourism, although they will be on that 180 days. And then eventually they might file for a residency category. Whereas others that we work with, some of them will actually come down prior to their move, file their residency when they're in, in the country leave and then come back um, when their residency is approved. So some people we work with just know they're gung ho. They're like, I already qualify. I know I want to file. I don't want to do border runs. I'm going to file residency. And there's a few different categories there. And that's just a whole nother video too. But at least knowing what do you want to do? So you know, if you come and put roots down in the country, it's good for you to know your future options because what if you know, what if you really want to stay and you maybe don't qualify for a category at that moment or kind of what would be your long term plan to be able to be a resident of the country so that you're not on this perpetual, you know, tourist visa here in Costa Rica. So residency and visas, you know, the timelines can vary. Like I said, some people want to get that done before they even get here. Others, I do suggest I will say, why don't you come here and reevaluate every three to six months if you want to file? This might be for people who are already eligible to file. So that might be logistic that happens after the move, but I think it's something that you absolutely need to be thinking about prior to coming to Costa Rica. Because otherwise, um, yeah, I mean, kind of that's kind of what I did, unfortunately. I just moved here and I didn't really think about any residency cat. Like I said, I don't ever do what I did when I moved here. That's why I'm very um, specific in helping people and like I said, not making those mistakes. I do have my permanent residency now, so that's different. You know, it all worked out, but 
think about your residency and visa options. Because if you do come and fall in love with Costa Rica and you really want to be here long term, then you want to make sure that you have options for that as well. So let's see. We go through residency, visas. One of the other logistics, well, it's really one that we handle more towards the end. We usually start this process for people that we work with two months in advance, but it's the long-term rental search. So searching for your rental. Because if you've seen, Airbnbs here can get really pricey. It's better to look for something that's long-term. You'll save a lot of money. And that's why whenever we work with someone, we do start that process at least two months in advance. By three months, we're already requesting their rental submission where they tell us their area and how much per month and all the parameters that we should be searching in. But long-term rental search is probably one of the most complicated logistics too, to be honest with you. And um, so I have... Well, like we got our Relocate Now program and our new DIY Do It Yourself to Costa Rica e-course. And in those courses, that is the longest section. I think I think that has the longest section with the most parts. That in areas for living, because there's different sections that go into detail of every single area of the country. So that's a, that's a big logistic. And that's also, I've done other videos on this before, so we're not going to dive too deep, but just something to keep on your radar. You know, your long-term rental search. Long-term rental could be something over a month. Three months, sometimes we'll try to negotiate three months with the option to extend because then if you really love the place, you can stay. But if you end up wanting to move on to another place, you're not locking yourself into a, an entire year in one in, in one area, which I usually don't recommend, depending. Like I've had some people have been down on some trips or they came down on one trip. They want that stability. Maybe they went and saw the rentals that we looked for in person and they said, yes, we want to commit a year to this. Then, then that would be fine. But otherwise... Yeah, sight unseen, I would not rec like recommend committing an entire year to somewhere just in case. So we got long-term rental search. Then we go into packing. I know that sounds kind of obvious, but it's not, you know, packing isn't just whenever you're at, kind of at the last minute packing your last things that you're going to be bringing here. I would be thinking about some of those things, even if you're a year, year and a half out. Well, really evaluating everything in your home because a lot of that is you downsizing. Yeah, we'll make packing also downsizing. This is a logistic that if you can start as soon as possible, as soon as you even think you might move somewhere out of the country, it doesn't even have to be Costa Rica. And a lot of these apply to any country. I would say all these pretty much apply to any countries. But if you can downsize as soon as possible, even if you don't move, you're probably doing yourself a favor. So definitely just downsize as soon as possible and really start evaluating. And I'm gonna, am I going to take this with me? Do I need this? You know, am I actually going to need this? You'd be using this for my move. And if you're unsure, so I don't always just recommend getting rid of all of your most favorite prized possessions or things that mean a lot or maybe they've been passed down through your family. What's another good solution is, you know, in some cases, will people say, well, you know, we're just not ready to get rid of that stuff is I'll say, well, put it in storage for X amount of time. Again, give yourself kind of a time and how often you're going to evaluate how long those should, things should be in storage. And then you can always go back to them. And sometimes it's a little bit easier after, let's say, you've moved down here. You already kind of know what you need and what you don't need. Sometimes I'll, I will say a lot of people, so that brings me to shipping. I will say a lot of people that um, end up shipping that we've worked with have actually regretted it sometimes. Sometimes no, but sometimes yes, depending on what it is. Sometimes they say, oh man, we brought all this stuff we're not even using. So definitely that's why the downsizing part, portion is going to be really good because if you do decide to ship, you're making sure that you're shipping the items that you actually really need as well. And then, yeah, I said the packing. So, you know, you can start buying things over time that you know that you're going to need for your move as well. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Let's see. Soccer USA says, I wonder how good the Wi-Fi access is there now. Yeah, you can get really good Wi-Fi access here in the country. Sometimes mine is really terrible. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm thinking about uh, getting the, what is that? Star, what are you, Starlink? That would be great. I think I could use some of that. But today it looks like the Internet's cooperating, so that's good. Let's see, we have welcome to Manuel Antonio apartment. Okay, someone is posting their apartment for rent. Perfect. Um, I was there eight, okay, Michael says, I was there eight years ago in Hako and loved it, would like to come back. What is the tour about? Um, maybe if you can clarify what the tour is about, let me know. And yeah, so I actually live near Hako for anyone who doesn't know. And I like living near here. I live just out, outside. 
15, 10, 15 minutes outside of town, and it's great. I have everything that I need, not too far from the airport. Again, that's kind of, but I've traveled around. I've been out in the middle of nowhere. I've been on the top of an isolated mountain with no neighbors, up some treacherous dirt roads. So, or I've also lived right outside of San Jose. So it's okay to be moving around and, you know, finding areas that do feel like it's a good fit for you. It's good to try out different things to see what you like and what you don't like. So shipping, all right. So we mentioned a little bit about shipping. That's something that, you know, should be, you should definitely be consulting on within the six months prior to your move as well. So that's good that if you've been downsizing, then you'll kind of know, you know, what you're going to be shipping or not going to be shipping. So if you're going to go into that shipping consult, then you can already have an idea of what you're actually going to be bringing with you as well. So another one, I'm going to have bringing pets, bringing pets. So I would say 90%, of, maybe 80 to 90% of the people that we work with, work with do bring their pets to Costa Rica. So it's very common. I'll have some people email and say, I know I might sound crazy, but I really want to bring my cat. And I'm like, you are not crazy at all. There are lots of people bringing their pets. The issue with bringing pets is really just the airlines. They're just the most difficult, but it's, it's pretty doable. There's different options that, you know, we'll offer people. First, I try to find, you know, I'll look at the person where they're coming from and look at the flights and the airlines that are available. And I can usually kind of pick out which ones would allow cargo and at the whole, hopefully the most minimal fees. Other airlines might require the use of a pet broker, which can get pricey. Some people don't want to put their dog in cargo or, you know, their pets in cargo for whatever reason. Maybe it's a health problem that their animal does have. So in that case, they might, um, they might do that private flight, which is also really pricey. It wouldn't be ideal if you're doing that back and forth, back and forth, but maybe if it's a one-time thing, you just factor it into your move. Yeah. So Teresa says that, um, I don't know, who's that? Oh, Pet Lounge is amazing for us. Yep. So Pet Lounge, so that's a pet, that's a good example of a pet broker. Wayne said he brought two dogs from Canada. Exactly. So yeah, a lot of people bring in their pets. It's just the airlines that are kind of a pain, but there is pet paperwork that needs to be done. It needs to be done within a certain time frame and it has to be done correctly because it's just delicate. It's like one of those logistics that I wish the paperwork could be done months prior to your move, but it usually has to be done within 10 to 14 days prior to your move. But there are some things that you can be, do be doing months in advance, like at least talking to your vet, making sure they're all up to date on all their shots, you know, their vaccines. Uh, but then when it comes down to the paperwork, that does have to be done within a small amount of time frame prior to your move and you have to know exactly where you're living in the country you know the flight that you're on obviously your tickets already need to be booked and if it's not done correctly it can really throw off your move because gosh you know that's not fun you know if that gets messed up okay now you got to change your flights and maybe now you have to get that fixed and then you got to let the homeowner know and then maybe you got to reorganize your transport and it just becomes a real pain so bringing pets is something delicate that you want it to be done correctly Okay, Wayne says, I didn't even look at the paperwork we brought at the airport. That's the thing. So that's just the thing with customs and immigration here in Costa Rica. Because I have, you know, I've always told people, especially even during COVID or, you know, you need to have the return ticket, which you do. I will still stand by that. Even if they didn't look at it, it was still worth it for you to do it. So always have all the entry requirements, whether it's for you or for your pet. You might get the immigration person who's going to ask you for everything in great detail and ask to look at everything. Or you might get someone who's just like, all right, bye. See you. Have a good, you know, have a good life. Bye. Next. <laughs> but it's always worth it. It's always, always worth it to do it correctly because you never know who you're going to get. You know, you're randomly called up to each person. You don't know what mood they're in. You just want to make sure that, you know, you might've gotten lucky, Wayne, and you've got someone who was ready for their lunch break or, you know, ready to get off their shift and was just passing people through, which happens. Same with the borders too. So you always want to come prepared whether you're entering or exiting the country, no matter what. So we'll have people say like, Sarah, I went through all this to get all this. They barely even looked at it. And I'm like, I know, I'm sorry, but it was totally worth it. You did it. You did the right thing. So let's see, packing, shipping, bringing pets. Another thing, which I'm going to do a whole webinar on is budgeting. So budgeting. So this, I mean, if people, if you don't create a proper budget, before moving to Costa Rica based on the area. Like a lot of the, these things really do tie together very deeply. So if you don't create a proper budget, depending on the area that you're gonna be with your lifestyle, you know, that can be definitely a big pitfall because then you might come to Costa Rica and go, wow, this is a lot more expensive than what I expected. So preparing a proper budget that has real numbers that, you know, fits you and your lifestyle 
is very important. So like in our, when we work one-on-one -on -one with people or through the DIY course, I, we do have a whole module on budgeting, beautiful spreadsheet. I'm a big spreadsheets person and we definitely go through all that. So how to get real numbers. So if you're like six months prior to your move or even more, you know, some are years from their move, it's good to be doing, you know, that market research to finding out the actual costs for certain things so that you can properly form your budget. So even if it's insurance or actually I also have a spreadsheet on calculating the cost of your move. So calculating, okay, how much is that extra baggage going to cost? How much will it be to bring your pet or pets, depending on what method of motor you're taking? Um, yeah. So residency, you know, depending on if you're doing that prior to getting to the country, then that's kind of a cost of your move or if you're going to do it right after, but whereas if you're going to wait, then you can budget in a little bit later. So budgeting, very important. So I think so important that I will be doing a, a, um, a whole, we I'm going to be doing a whole webinar on it. I'm just working on creating it right now because I want it to be a really good one because I think it'll be really helpful to people. But you let me know if you think it's a waste of time and it's not going to be helpful. You let me know. Like I said, I want to make sure to be covering topics that are going to be most important for everyone. And, you know, as you know, maybe you've been looking at the news, the dollar has been dropping here a lot in Costa Rica. So it's actually lower than when I first moved here almost nine years ago. When I moved here, I think it was 500 colonas to one U.S. dollar. And now, gosh, I don't even want, I don't even want to look at it today. It's fine. But it's probably lower than that right now. But the thing is, when I moved here nine years ago, the price of items in colonas was cheaper. So then with the dollar going up over the years, the price of colonas of things went up. But now the price of the dollar is down, so then it's just making everything more expensive too if you do earn your income in U.S. dollars or, you know, other currencies that are, that, yeah. I'm not, I'm not a financial expert, but I know that things are getting more expensive for sure. So budgeting, banking. So I have a lot of people, I'm like, okay, you know, I'll say, okay, well, do you need assistance with the logistic of banking? And they're like, no, no, I don't need that. I'm, I'm good. I don't need a bank account there. Or yeah, no, I already know how to get a bank account there, but it's definitely goes both ways. So there's some banking things that I'll recommend for people to do prior to moving. That's really important, like a few months prior if possible. Or there, But then also if someone does want to come and set up a bank account here, then they can as well. But the really the main goal is to make sure that your banking is going to be really seamless from what you're, you have going on in your home country that you can be using that down here and that you're not getting as much fees. So usually when people think I'm talking about banking, they're like, oh, no, I don't need a bank account or, oh, yeah, just let me know what I need to set one up there. But really a lot of what the banking that I have to talk about is what you need to be doing prior to arriving, especially, for example, you get to Costa Rica, you find a car that you want to buy and you go, oh, shoot, I can't wire that. I can't do an international wire transfer without being inside my bank. That's a bummer. Now you got to fly all the way back and spend that money. So there's a lot of banking things that should be done on the other end as well. Or there's some other services that you can do to send wires or, like I said, just minimizing your fees is the most important because that's just going to start adding up too over time. Let's see. So we've got banking, budgeting, number nine, insurance. And I wouldn't say that also in the order that I'm putting all these things, like obviously number one is something that you should do fairly early. Because what we do whenever we work with someone is we create a month-to-month -month roadmap. So we create a month-to-month -month plan with all of their logistics. We do this through our DIY program or through our Relocate Now, you know, one-on-one -on -one service. We do an hour and a half call, kickoff call with them where we actually explain every single logistic. Basically, the person tells us what they want, what they're trying to accomplish, and we'll tell them exactly how exactly, you know, how to do that the fastest. So, um... No, I forgot. Oh, so these, like all these logistics here are sprinkled in. Let's say if I'm doing a six month timeline or a three month timeline or a nine month timeline, it's not that we just do, okay, number one is done the first month. Number two is done the second month. They're all like kind of weaved and sprinkled in throughout all the months. Like I said, bringing pets months prior, I'll say, okay, go talk to your vet. But then the 10 to 14 days prior to your move, you have more things to do for that logistics. So just so I, I just wanted to at least explain that like the order of these doesn't really matter. It's just for you to be considering all them because a lot of what's done for each of these logistics is sprinkled within your whole timeline anyways. And then that's what we usually do. We arrange it as to where it's supposed to go and maybe, you know, figure out who someone needs to talk to in order to accomplish something. Okay. So insurance. Okay. Oh yeah. So insurance. I didn't even finish out that. So that could be, well, car that might be done after you've arrived and you bought a car health insurance that would be might be something that you'll get before 
And this, I'm not really talking about the CAHA, the, the universal healthcare system. This would be if someone, someone, something additional. So if you, or, you know, if you don't have residency, if you want, you know, more comprehensive plan, if you want something, am I, did I do that thumbs up thing or someone, I think someone gave a thumbs up. Um, if they want more comprehensive plan, or if you want something just in case of accident or emergency through like more of a traveler's insurance type. So car health, you can also get home insurance. Um, I do have people ask me about renter's insurance. So we do not have renter's insurance here in Costa Rica. So that's something to consider. And you, let's say if you have a piece of property, like a piece of not property, like home or anything, um, a camera, let's say if you have a camera that you want to, you want to insure a particular item, you can do that here as well. So insurance, that insurance might tie, you know, into you doing your budgeting too. So that's why a lot of these getting quotes and a lot of these things does matter because, you know, insurance does tie to budgeting. Then you have actual numbers to fill into that budget, depending on what type of coverage you want. Um, medical. So for that logistic, we usually ask people, are they, you know, are you taking any prescriptions? Because if that's the case, we'll do prescription research. We'll call the pharmacies in the areas to make sure, you know, to see, um, you know, if, if that particular medication is available, if so, how much does it cost or if there's a generic so that people can know how much they'd actually be paying out of pocket for their medications. We can also find out, does the person even need a prescription for it? You know, like blood pressure medication, thyroid medication, like those don't seem to be medications here in Costa Rica that people actually need prescriptions for. You can usually just bring what you already have, go to the pharmacy, and then they'll get it filled for you. So for medical, some people come down for medical procedures. So that could be dental work, or uh, surgeries. We've had people come down who've moved that have had surgeries done. So, so yeah, so that that's what I would consider medical. We'd just like to know if anyone has any concerns, if they're taking any, any prescriptions, if there's any particular medical procedures that they might want to do, you know, here in the country as well. I'm going to have to change pages. So let's see, we got, oh, well, let me see if I can, because I want to get this all in one sheet in case some people are coming in here late. I just don't know how to do that. Maybe I'm just not that technologically inclined sometimes. I think I can make this smaller. That, I'm going to have this all on one page. That way you guys can take notes. Because I know that... Can I? Okay, I can move it. I can't make it smaller. Does anyone know how to use an iPad around here? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I can resize it. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness, that's fun. Okay. Yay. All right, can you guys still see this pretty well? Yeah, I think there's not going to be too many more after this. So I think we're good. Awesome. Yay. Awesome. Great. Technology for the win. Um, okay, so medical. Let me just think. Okay, residency visas. Okay, car purchase. Car purchase. So for this logistic, I always like to know people's budget, what kind of car are they looking for, send them some things that can help them do some market research to understand the pricing of the types of vehicles that they're looking for educating them on the car purchase process. What is kind of the fastest, easiest way to do it? Because we know car rentals are pretty expensive here in Costa Rica. So car car purchase, I usually like to know, you know, when is the person's goal for purchasing a vehicle? A lot of times they want to get it as soon as possible because they don't want to be spending money on a car rental, which can be thousands of dollars. It's, it's ridiculous. That's a whole, <laughs> the car rentals here in this country are so expensive. So Car purchase, a lot of times people want to, want, will want to do as quickly as possible. So we might have some dealerships that will recommend or some people that can help make the process super fast or we'll also teach them how to do it themselves. Like I'd like teaching, teaching people how to do things themselves. I used a car broker for my first car purchase. My second, I, it was more of a do it myself kind of thing because I also wasn't in a rush. So when you're in kind of more of a rush, that does make a difference because you're trying to get a car as fast as possible so that you're more mobile. So car purchase... Or just also, some people move. We work with a lot of people who move and they don't purchase cars. So in that case, it's important to educate yourself on your transport options. So we'll educate them on the bus system in a certain area. Or yeah, how are they going to get around? What are their options? How much do they usually cost? Making sure that they're within at least walking distance to things that they, you know, their basic needs. That's important. So whether it's car purchase or transport options, you're going to need to get around one way or another. Um, let's see. I think the last one might be phones. And these are just the major logistics. Like I said, there's always all, uh, well, you know, and then there's 
minor logistics that always come up. We get so many questions about so many random little things that just pop up. And if we don't know the answer, we'll do the research. But these are just, like I said, these are just the major logistics that I want you to be considering. Oh, okay, and I do want to, okay, I see some comments in here that I definitely want to address. Um, so phones, some people want to be able to keep their numbers, their phone numbers. If that's the case, you know, we there are ways for you to basically come down to Costa Rica, put in a Costa Rican phone chip or an eSIM from here, and then there's ways for you to port your number over to another service. Let's say if you need it for work or you just don't want to lose that number. Let's say you've had it for 20 years or I don't know, I don't know 15 years, whatever it is, and you don't want to lose that phone number for whatever reason. There are ways that you can keep your phone number but not be paying for that expensive service. For example, in the United States, to use your Verizon phone down here is like ten dollars a day. That's that's crazy. So if you can get a you know getting a phone plan down here, that's usually logistic. That well, obviously we assist with after someone moves because the plan needs to be in their name. They have to bring their passport. We just tell them exactly where to go. If they're in my area, I'll even go with them to do it, or I'll set up the appointment so hopefully they're not standing in line all day. Because you know you'll realize you'll be in line quite a bit today, quite a bit sometimes in Costa Rica, um, which is fine too. But yeah, phones is another big logistic. Because also think about those text codes. Whenever you leave the country, your bank's going to want to re-verify everything. So don't just cancel that phone plan because you might have a hard time getting into some accounts, you know, if you do do that. So make sure that you can still get into all of your accounts. You have that plan. Maybe you set up another kind of tooth enter to, to whatever, two-factor authentication on your different accounts so that you don't get locked out of accounts because now you don't have that phone number or you don't have access for a text to come through to that phone number. Um, another one I would say, okay, this would be like kids in schools. Again, it's not last on the list. None of these are really in any major particular order except for the first one. That's pretty important that you do that early. But yeah, kids, kids in schools. So for that, we'll have people come down maybe on their scouting trips. We'll set up appointments for them to actually see schools in person or just knowing what schools are where. So like we have a little spreadsheet with all this, like a lot of the major private schools in a lot of the different areas. So sometimes that can be an influencing factor in someone choosing their area as well. And I wanna get to some questions here. Um, okay, I'm on YouTube saying okay, live slow, die whenever. Says there's a VA foreign medical program for veterans with service connected issues. Yes, there is. And I actually have a video coming out on that too later. I just need to edit it. So, well, number one, I have contact with a doctor that works, was, was just one of the approved doctors that works with the VA. So I, to my understanding, VA is that um, medical insurance for retired veteran, or, you know, for veterans. And he'll actually come to your house and, you know, do that home visit. And then I also had a really good call uh, with meeting with SEMA. With SEMA is one of the probably most well-known hospital here in Costa Rica, private hospital, and they have a department that serves, you know, pe people who are under the VA medical insurance. So I will be working on editing that video probably this week. It might go up next month, but yes, we got that covered too. We have connections in those areas. That's important to know. Let's see. Someone says, do I need a Costa Rica driver's license? So you're not going to get a Costa Rica driver's license until after you become a resident. Until you become a resident, you cannot get a Costa Rican driver's license. Okay, and I'm just going to get through some of the other questions. So I appreciate you guys sticking with me. Maybe if you can also let me know how the quality is here. And like I said, if it's any of you guys kind of first time getting to know me, um, I help you help people move to Costa Rica. We have a few different programs. So we do, well, relocation, one-on-one -on -one services because a lot of people want us to sit down, look at talk to them for an hour and a half to two hours and really sort through everything and actually take care of a lot of logistics before, during, and after the move. Or some people, now I made a new program for some people who are more of a, I'm going to do it myself. But I did it myself and I made a ton of mistakes. So, but also when I moved, I was, what, 23 years old. I probably wouldn't have, you know, done a big extensive one-on-one -on -one program like what we have for a lot of people that we work with. So I made the DIY, the do-it-yourself move to Costa Rica program for people who want to do it themselves, but you're still going to get all the same information. So it's like a course format, uh, but we also have weekly calls and I do create your roadmap. So whenever you do sign on to that program and you fill out that sheet, I do create your roadmap and we have like a quick 15 minute onboarding call to discuss it. But yeah, so let's see. Okay. I was here eight years ago. Okay. Let's see. I'm just looking for the last questions. 
What is the available storage in Costa Rica if you'll be there for only six months of the year? There is storage available. So there are some storage facilities. I've seen like those mini bodegas in San Jose and there's storage facilities out in San Isidro. There's some up in Liberia. So like we've done that research. So that would be like another example of things that we'll do that are outside of this list. Let's say if someone says, oh, you know, what are the storage facilities in this area? We'll go okie doke. So then we do the research, we make the list and we send it to them via email. So again, it saves people time of not having to sort through all that. And we can honestly probably do a lot, a lot quicker and it saves you the time and the energy of trying to find it. Or we'll make calls, you know, if we can call and find out. So wants to know our furniture prices affordable. So yeah, I mean, I think they're pretty affordable. I mean, I did, I furnished my home. Some of my home furniture was bought from stores, but a lot of it was custom made. Like my dresser's custom made, my bed, couch, but then like I bought the bar stools for my kitchen. So I, I think the furniture is kind of affordable, I would say. Is it easy to find long, find furnished long-term rentals? Yes, there's a lot of furnished long-term rentals. So that's, I would say 99% of the people that we work with want furnished, not unfurnished. So we find a lot of those. Um, let's see. Okay, someone said, I've heard that as a resident, you can bring in a car and a shipping container, either duty-free or reduced charge. Is that correct? Yes. So that is correct for the residency categories of pensionado, rentista, and versionista. So if you're going to be bringing in, so if you have to get your residency, so your residency has to be approved, it needs to be in your hand, and then you can ship a storage container with import tax-free. You're still going to have to pay, like, obviously, the shipment of the goods and all that stuff. But you can do the shipping container and two vehicles. So it could be a motorcycle and a car, two cars, two motorcycles, you know, any kind of, you can also ship motorized vehicles as well. But you can't sell them after. So I've had some people say, oh, I'll just bring an extra car and then sell it after I get there. But I forget what the time is on there, but you can't, um, you can't sell it. It's not like you can just move to the country and sell those vehicles. You have to still have them. So, um, so that's for shipping. And that's going to expire at some point. I need to look. It's all like, it's, I have all this, you know, there's a lot of information in my brain. So that's why I have everything in a nice, easy to follow course format for people. And I know I have the information on there as to when that's going to expire. But I do know that people that do get their residency prior to that law, let's say expiring, they have up to 10 years to utilize it. So that's something that you should know as well. Okay. Banking is a nightmare unless you open one. Scotia Bank is very friendly with no, with no residents. Yes. Oh, and actually I have another thing to mention on banking. Uh, sounds like, so one of my employees, um, Augustina, she's amazing. She went with one of our clients the other day to Banco Nacional and Banco Nacional had let her know that they are going to, they're having a new system that's going to be more friendly to non-residents as well. And I think you could pretty much just go with your passport. You don't need to go with a bunch of, you know, documents and do all that. So that's exciting. When, when will I be? Okay, someone said these are really good topics. When will you be talking about these? I missed the intro. So this this video was just about, you know, major logistics that I do want people to consider and have on their radar. Every single one of these logistics, I could talk for to for about an hour each one. So we wouldn't have time to do all that today. But that's why, you know, we do cover a lot of this through our programs with people one on one because every logistic, there's always lots of follow up questions that we have again with like the shipping. OK, well, what do you want to ship? Where are you shipping from? So it's never just a one answer fits all. It's just it really isn't. It's just not for any of these, especially medical or the insurance, for example. OK, well, what kind of coverage do you want? What do you have now? You know, maybe the person has some VA coverage, too. So then explain to them how that actually works here. So, yeah. This is just the overview of things that I don't want people to be missing. What are the permanent residency process? Again, that's a whole can of worms that we can open up in another video. Um, but the permanent residency process, so first you get temporary residency, then after some years you can go ahead and switch that over to permanent. Um, do I need, okay, we already answered that one. A note on kids and schools, the school year starts in February and ends in November. Yes, that can be true for a lot of schools. So for a lot of schools here in Costa Rica, the school year does start in February and ends in November, but some schools are different. Again, if these are private schools, some of them are kind of more alternative. Like I know my friend's son goes to a school that they do like these little two week breaks all throughout the year. So they don't have like a time where they have like two, two months off, let's say. 
So for most schools, that is the case, but some maybe not. It just depends on the school. And like on our spreadsheet that we have, I think we do have when the school year starts and ends, so we have the grade levels that they serve, you know, where to find the tuition. Okay, best resources to find rentals for one to two months, Facebook or Airbnb. I mean, it's only one to two months. Maybe you can get on Airbnb and try to negotiate a lower rate with the owner if the rate, if the rate just looks a little bit outrageous. Or you can get into some of the Facebook groups and ask. It's, it's worth asking for sure and checking Facebook first too. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time. Your videos are great. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. And I'm, you know, I appreciate you guys being here as well. So I guess I think I got to everyone's questions. Again, this is kind of a new system that I'm using. I'm trying to make an effort to go live more often, but you know, busy, busy schedules, but it's all been good. I, I do like coming on here and getting to answer people's questions and, and doing that. So hopefully this kind of helped. Maybe this is some stuff you already knew. Uh, again, I know all these can sound really, really overwhelming. So that's why we do assist with each step of this process. Or like I said, other things that come up. So someone else just commented, do I have recommendations for realtors, lawyers, etc.?" Yes. So alongside of walking people step by step through these processes of moving, we also have our vetted contacts and professionals that I've built over the years that, you know, we're not always easy to find. And I was the guinea pig on a lot, you know, let's say for the construction, like, yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm definitely happy to guinea pig a lot, which I've done so that you guys hopefully can have these good experiences and not come out with a nightmare story of Costa Rica. That's always the goal, right? Because you always have to be careful with who you're working with here. So I do always, you know, truly work with people that I believe in, share my same moral and ethical values and and yeah. And what else? That's it. So if you guys are needing any assistance, you can find some links down in the description. I have some links to our programs. Like I said, I came out with a new do-it-yourself move because I know there's a bunch of do-it-yourselfers out there that are like, nah, I don't need the help. You might. You might need some things and it's super affordable. Uh, but we also do have 12 weeks of group calls. So those are really fun. And then of course I have our one-on-one our -on -one program, which is our most, most popular uh, that we do with helping people move and we do payment plans on that as well and you're always welcome to set up a call prior to perhaps engaging in that service because for me I also like to make sure that it's a right fit to work together and to make sure that you know it's actually appropriate like it's a good fit and then that's it and then oh, scouting trips yeah if you are thinking about coming down on a scouting trip what I do in that case is so our scouting trip service is on our website what I do whenever someone does scouting trip with us and then if they come back from their trip and everything went really well and they want to move on to relocation I take what they paid for the scouting trip and I apply it to the relocation. So I, I should probably make that more clear on the website. But because, you know, we've already developed that relationship. We've already done a lot of the legwork in terms of research at that point. So, so yeah, I guess that's it. Have a great day. Okay. Well, I hope you all have a great day and I will try to be live more often and I will get working more on that budgeting webinar. That's what I really need to do. I need to get more on that budgeting webinar for people because I think it'll be helpful. All righty. Well, thanks again. And I will see you guys another day, hopefully this week. <laughs>